Ravin, you know, one of the big ideas in the book is, is, is this new work operating system. You know, what, what does it mean? Uh, and, and, and what does the phrase work without jobs mean? Yeah, so, so David, maybe I'll just start with the principles that underpin this new work operating system and I'll get into some of the elements as we go through this conversation. But uh, the four principles that we found to be essential to this new work operating system one is, you know, starting with the work. It sounds trivial, it sounds almost trite, but it's really about starting with the work. You know, what are the current and future tasks and not just the existing bundle, i.e. the existing jobs. So yeah. kind of transcending that legacy of jobs is really kind of that first sort of basic principle. The second, as we talked about that John and I explored in um, our previous book, achieving the optimal combinations of humans and automation, having that really in-depth understanding of <clears throat> where does a specific type of automation substitute certain types of human endeavor? Where does it augment the work of the human, sort of allowing them to be almost super productive uh, by, by letting them focus on the best of who they are? And where does it transform or create new work? Um, the third principle is instead of limiting ourselves to then, you know, organizing a job around <clears throat> the remaining tasks, excuse me, um, considering the full array of human work engagements. So, you know, is, it empl is employment the best way of getting work done? Um, in, in that instance, should it be someone in a job? Should it be a, uh, a freelancer? Should it be a gig worker? Should the work be organized, maybe done by employees, but employees flowing to projects and assignments or a variety of other internal arrangements? You've, uh, David, certainly many of your guests have talked about this notion and the rapid rise of internal marketplaces. Um, you know, we explore that in some detail because as you apply automation, it, the marketplace often is the best way to create and build on that more agile way of getting work done so that you can continuously keep automating and creating new work for talent. And then the fourth dimension is, once you've considered the full array of work engagements, allowing talent to flow to work versus being limited in traditional fixed jobs and thus increasing the agility with which we, we get work done and with which talent connects to work. Now, now you know, it's it's, We've, John and I have had the question about, um, you know, work without jobs. Now, we're not saying in the near term that jobs are going to go away. But I think in William Gibson's infamous quote, you know, the future is here. It's just unevenly distributed. What we're seeing are many, many organizations applying the elements of this new work operating system to move to ever more agile ways of working. Um, you know, some have maybe cynically said that, uh, you know, this title is clickbait and actually far from it. Um, you know, what the title really points to is the growing inability of the current work operating system with its indexing and legacy of jobs um, and that core foundation of jobs being the elemental unit of work and that by extension, that one to one relationship between a degree, a job and a job holder. Um, is is fundamentally incapable of keeping up with this with this emerging world of work, and I think what the book does is that it illustrates with these these four principles of the new work operating system, you know what that actually looks like, and how that's actually being realized by numerous organisations through the various cases that we have in the book. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data driven digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe via your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.